In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the subscript out of range error. This is a very common error, so it's important to understand it so you can resolve it easily when it occurs. My name is Paul Kelly, and I've been writing software for almost 30 years, and I've spent the last 10 years running a very successful Excel VBA blog and this Excel VBA YouTube channel. And my aim is to help you get the most from VBA with the least amount of effort. So let's jump right in. First, let's clarify what the subscript out of range error actually is. So here is an example. I declare an array using them, and then when I run this code, I get a subscript out of range error. If I click on the bug, it will bring me to the line with the error. So why does this error occur, and what does it actually mean? When we use dim like this to create an array, we get an array with three positions. We've got position one, position two, and we've got position three. In programming terms, the position number is called a subscript. Now it's also called an index, and these terms are used interchangeably. We can use these position numbers, that is the subscripts, to access an item in the array. The range of this array is from subscript one to subscript three. So we've got three positions, as we've said. So the subscript out of range means that we were using a subscript that is outside this range. So in other words, it's not one, two, or three. So for example, if we use subscript zero or subscript four, we will get this error as we only have the three positions. Now let's look at a second example. Now we create an array that has subscripts zero to three. So this array has four positions and they are namely zero, one, two, and three. So we can use any of these subscripts to access an item in the array. If we try and use any other subscript with this array, we'll get the subscript out of range error. Now looking at our code again, you can see clearly why this error occurs. We've got three positions in our array and we've tried to access the array at position four. If we run this code, you'll see that it gives us the subscript out of range error. When an error occurs in VBA like this, we select the bug as it will bring us to the line where the error has occurred. And this obviously makes our life a lot easier when it comes to fixing errors. Now the subscript out of range error can also occur when we're using a collection. In this example, we add apple to position one and pear to position two in the collection. When we run the code, we get an error. Now the immediate window shows that the first two items were printed but then a subscript out of range error occurred before the third item could be printed. Clicking on debug reveals that the error occurs when we try to print an item at subscript three, which does not exist. One way to prevent this error happening in this code would be to use a for loop. And so in this case, we go for i equals one to call dot count. And this will always return us the range of items in a collection, no matter how many items the collection has. Now, this isn't a guarantee that you won't get this error, but it does make it a lot less likely. So we've got lots of different types of collections in VBA, such as worksheets, workbooks, and so on. And the subscript out of range can happen in any of those collections if we try and access an item that doesn't exist or try and access a position that doesn't exist. This is a workbook I've just created and it has one worksheet. And we can access the worksheet either using this position, which is one, or using the worksheet name. So if we run this code, it will print out sheet one twice. So it accesses the worksheet in both cases and it'll print out the name. So we've got sheet one, no problem. Now if I change this to two, there's no worksheet two or in position two. So we will get the familiar subscript out of range error. So the same thing applies for line two. If we don't use a valid worksheet name, then that worksheet name isn't in the worksheets collection and we'll get the subscript out of range error. One way we can prevent this error is by using the code name of the worksheet when the worksheet is in the current workbook. So let's take a look at the worksheet properties. So if I click on the sheet here, you can see the properties in the properties window. You can see that sheet one appears there twice. Now the top one is the code name and the lower one is the worksheet name. So the name on the worksheet. And we're gonna change the code name to actually say code name so that we can see exactly what it is. Now you'll see that code name appears in the project window on the left. You see it's outside the parentheses and the worksheet name is still the same. Now the code name means we can directly access the code name in our code like this 
as long as the worksheet is in the current workbook. And when we run the code, you can see we don't get any problems. Now, if we change the worksheet name to sheet two, the code name will still work fine. And now let's change the worksheet name and we rename this worksheet and I'm going to change it to my data, my data. So now we run the code and you can see we get subscript out of range error. Now, if I comment out this line and run the code on, it works fine because we're referencing the code name. And as long as that doesn't change, our code will always work fine. So that's one good way of preventing the subscript out of range error when we're using worksheets. So here is another example of the subscript out of range error, and it's not quite as obvious as the ones we've seen before. Now, in this case, imagine we declare a two dimensional array and then we run the code. But as you'll see in the second line, we're only specifying one dimension when we're trying to update a value. And so this gives us the error, the wrong number of dimensions. Now that's pretty good because that's exactly what the problem is and it's quite obvious where we went wrong. In VBA, there's another way that we can use an array. We can dim the array without specifying the size and then later we can use redim to set the size. Now the advantage of this is that it gives us flexibility within our code because redim allows us to set the size using variables. The end result is the same, but if we run this code, now the exact same error occurred as before, but in this case, it's reported as a subscript out of range error. Now staying on the subject of 2D arrays, imagine we have an array and we're declaring it as a variant because we want to read it from the worksheet. And then what we do is we say my array and we assign that to a range on the worksheet and that range is gonna be A1 to D5. And we set value at the end so that it returns an array. Now when I run this code, you can see we get the subscript out of range error. Again, the same idea is that we haven't specified enough dimensions, but the actual error that's coming up is subscript out of range. Let's take a look at a very subtle version of the subscript out of range error. Here we have a one dimensional array and we've added two items to it. But now we realize we need more space. So we use redim to resize the array. However, the issue is that redim on its own wipes the existing data. Now to keep the current items, we use the preserve keyword. When we run the code, you can see in the watch window that the array retains its original items and now has an additional position. So this works perfect for single dimensional arrays. But here's where the problem arises. If we have a two dimensional array, we can still use redim preserve, but only on the last dimension. So for example, here we can redim the second dimension and it will work fine. So we've got to update these two lines as well as we've just created a 2D array. And now if we step through the code, you'll see that the code works fine. But if I try to resize the first dimension, then I'll get a subscript out of range error. Now this error doesn't mean we're trying to access something that doesn't exist like before, but rather that we're trying to expand the array in a way that's not allowed. Subscript out of range is just one of the many errors you'll encounter in Excel VBA. When writing VBA code, errors are inevitable, so it's crucial to know how to identify and resolve them efficiently. In this nine minute video, you'll learn a straightforward approach to troubleshooting errors, saving you valuable time. I cover important error solving techniques that you won't find anywhere else, so make sure to check it out.